guys welcome back to my channel where we talk skincare for black skin if you're new to my channel welcome my name is amaka i am an esthetician and i also have a certificate in cosmetic science today we're talking about your skin barrier and why moisturizers could possibly be the most important step in your skincare routine so if you're interested in this content please keep on watching skin barrier your skin barrier as the name implies a barrier it's a barrier between you and the outside world its primary purpose is to shield you from you know pollutants microorganisms and other contaminants from entering into your skin and prevent your skin from losing water and other you know good nutrients that is essentially what it is it is a barrier and one very common analogy that is used to describe it is a brick and mortar wall so imagine your barrier as a brick and mortar wall that shields you from microorganisms that shields water from leaving your skin so i'll keep a diagram here so you understand what i'm talking about this is what the skin barrier should look like so your skin barrier is made up of three things or rather for your skin barrier to function there has to be three things functioning properly one are your dead skin cells these are the things that makes up the bricks in this diagram now these bricks prevent are insoluble prevent things from going into the skin as in like your normal skin that when you pour water it bounces out because of those bricks now those bricks are made up of conified it's like a conified envelope a thick envelope and it's made up of keratin that one makes it very solid and, and insoluble inside these bricks you have keratin as well that gives your skin that rigidity and you know just makes things bounce <laughs> bounce off the skin inside those bricks are natural moisturizing factors those are the things that helps you retain water like humectant your skin's natural humectant now that's the component of the bricks now the mortar the things that seals these bricks together and mixed into a wall are called lipids and they're made up of ceramides that's why you see some of your moisturizers saying ceramides essentially it helps your skin you know, produce more ceramides and just I'll get into that later. So it's made up of ceramide, free fatty acid, and cholesterol. That one makes the mortar that binds the bricks together. Then you have sebum, that's your oil. When you say when you hear when you say something like when you say I have oily skin, that oil is called sebum. Now you have sebum going on, and sebum like sits on the skin, softens the skin, and prevents you from losing water. The water that your natural moisturizing factor has been able to trap. Essentially, that is what your skin barrier does so what it does is it helps you retain water it softens your skin and prevents you from losing water it has lipids that seals your cornicides together and it has cornicides that prevent things from leaving your skin so for your skin barrier to function optimally all these things must be working optimally <laughs> then all of them have to be working like side by side once one thing is off once your natural moisturizing factors or what we call NMF is not retaining enough water, your skin barrier is impaired. Once your lipids are not, you know, are not, uh, has been maybe emulsified or has been, something is lacking, the skin barrier is impaired. Once you don't have enough sebum to prevent your skin from losing water, the skin barrier is impaired. So let's talk about how do you know your skin barrier has been impaired? Like, you just know. Once your skin starts going off, you just know and i don't know if i emphasize on the importance of this barrier i talked talk about the function but let me talk about the importance see most things that happen to your skin is because your skin barrier has been impaired it's not it's not working optimally as i explained i've said it several times it is the first in line issue like it protects you from you know like things from getting into your skin most times when you have things like maybe eczema or acne or different obviously acne is a combination of different things but one of the causes of acne is the proliferation of a bacteria called cutie bacteria and that cutie bacteria gets into your pores as a result of a like impaired skin barrier one of the reasons could be an impaired skin barrier so even eczema different things that happen when you have irritant contact dermatitis so where you put products in your skin and you break out in the rash skin barrier has been impaired so anything dehydration most of the things that you have is cut off with an impaired skin barrier the skin barrier has lost its ability to protect you from the outside world so you have to understand that that is your 
that is the that is the key thing that you have to ensure that it's always intact make that one intact first before you know seeking any other a skin skincare regimen so how do you know your skin is impaired it's very easy you know <laughs> listen to your skin you know your skin should not feel tight your skin should not be overly sensitive your skin should not feel like it's burning when these things are happening just know that something is off sometimes you may just see that your skin is unnecessarily red it's just stingy products that ordinarily you could tolerate before all of a sudden is now stinging your skin these are signs that your skin barrier is impaired a lot of times also your skin is now dry dehydrated it can it could also be a lot oily it can just show up in different ways when your skin is not functioning optimally most likely there has been like <laughs> an impairment <laughs> or a deficiency <laughs> of where am i speaking most likely there's an issue with your skin barrier so that's how you know your skin barrier is impaired what are the causes of a skin barrier dysfunction now the first thing is age so as you age as i explained there are three different things that has to be happening for your skin barrier to function optimally now as you age your skin starts getting drier you start producing less ceramides and once the once the mortar as i said the lipids that's made up of ceramides cholesterol and free fatty acids and the things that bind the cornucite together so if these conicides are not bound together, you can see there's now space for water to leave and for things to enter. Even though they cannot pass through the conicide, because they can pass through the spaces between the con um, the conicides. So once, at your age, you start producing less lipids, less water, and therefore it's unable to properly bind your conicides together, and therefore you're now put things like dehydration, dryness, and other things that can come as a result of an impaired skin barrier. Another thing is, you know, cosmetic products. You use things that are very harsh for your skin. You use very harsh soaps because soaps, detergents, surfactants, cleansers are one of the harshest steps in a skincare routine that disrupts your epidermal lipids, all those fats that bind your condition together. Because soaps, in their very nature, emulsifies oil and water. So what it does is, it, in the process of removing excess sebum, it takes even the good oil that you're not supposed to take. <laughs> Do you get? So using harsh soaps is one of them. Not moisturizing. These are things that can lead to an impaired skin barrier. Using harsh products over exfoliating. You're taking away most of the corny sites that are supposed to protect your skin. So your skin is left very bare. So these are things that could cause a damaged skin barrier. What do you use the word damage? I say, well, an impaired skin barrier. Now there's also, there's also genetics. People that have dry skin produce less sebum. And as I explained, Sebum is one of oil, is one of the prerequisites for a functional skin barrier. When you lack that, you tend to get dehydrated. Your lipids are not, you know, as, you know, functional. The lipids that are binding your corneal sites are not so as functional. So your, your skin is essentially vulnerable to a lot of irritants. Also, some diseases, like, um, I won't say disease, but some skin... Con what, why is my phone just great? Please. Like so from some skin concerns like eczema, people that have eczema have by default weak skin barrier. So if you're eczema prone, you know that your skin barrier is <laughs> by <laughs> by just being alive. The skin barrier even without doing anything, your skin barrier is really, really weak. So also medications, there's some medications that you take that dries out your skin. There are different things that can just even harsh weather. Harsh weather, extremely cold and dry climate can actually interfere with the normal function of your skin barrier. So what do you do, you know, when your skin barrier has an issue? Now you know all the things that has to be done. Like, you should be, be retaining water, you should prevent that water from them leaving your skin, you should have oils that would seal, oils and lipids that will seal your cornicides together and prevent you from losing water. All these things have to be functioning. Now you ask yourself, how do I help my skin barrier? How do I maintain my, my skin barrier? How do I repair my skin barrier? The only answer to that question, my friend, is a moisturizer. A moisturizer is the only thing that can help you maintain the integrity of your skin barrier, can help you repair your skin barrier. That is the only thing. Because in, in its very basic form, the cheapest of them will do three things. It will hydrate, it will have emollient, which is 
trying to replicate what the lipids do, softening the skin and filling up the gaps in the lipids, then it would it will occlude to have occlusives, which is trying to imitate what your sebum is doing, trying to prevent transepidermal water loss. A moisturizer in its basic form will do this thing for you. Now there are different kind of moisturizers. Don't get don't get me wrong. But they are moisturizers. They are moisturizers. It all it now all depends on what type of humectant we use, what type of emollients we use, what type of occlusives we use. So now that's why that's why we get into the different types of moisturizers. Why you prefer why you prefer one to the other. But in the basic form, a moisturizer is the only freaking thing that can help you with your skin barrier and your skin barrier is the most important thing in your skin hair routine you have to you see you're not, you're not doing anything and you're washing your face with a mouth cleanser using a sunscreen and moisturizing you are fine because what you are doing is you are taking your death you're protecting yourself from the sun and you're maintaining your skin barrier honestly with that yeah, fine. That's why I see people say things like, I'm like, I don't really do much, bro. I'm not your client, honestly speaking. I just moisturize, do sunscreen, and wash my face. I'm like, perfect, baby. You're doing all you have to do. All you have to do. Any additional thing will not be dependent on your specific needs. So if you now have acne, you cannot add things that will treat acne. If you have any other skin concern, you cannot add things that will treat that skin concern. So you see, my friend, when they say moisturizing is very essential, very key, very important. In fact, when it, the one that used to shock me is when someone has a bunch of acids in their routine, they skip moisturizers and I'm like, say what? <laughs> and you're wondering why your skin is inflamed. They just think like it's red. I'm like, this is your products. They're just burning my face. They're really, oh. <laughs> you're not protecting your skin barrier. Why would it burn your face? <laughs> Do you understand? Oh, no, no, no. If it's burning your face, maybe it's too harsh for you, shall but you can just so yeah, um yeah, so the most important thing is choosing a moisturizer that suits your skin type. For example, if you have dry skin, you know that you need products that you know would help you retain water, would soften your skin, and would prevent you from losing water. So you're looking for you know a thicker moisturizer. If you have normal skin, you're looking for lotions, light lotions, you can also do gels. If you have oily skin, you're also looking for light lotions and gel. I understand my oily skin sisters, especially people that stay in hot and humid, you know, regions may not want to use moisturizer. But if you listen to anything I said, you remember that I said that there are different components of your skin barrier. It's beyond sebum. So when you have oily skin, I think I've explained this thing in this video. But let me explain the question. When you have oily skin, there's excess production of sebum. That is just one, and sebum moisturizes your skin and prevents you from prevents epidermal water loss. That is just one section of the entire skin barrier function. Or the entire skin barrier process to perform its function, dig it. So you have excessive one, but you 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 cannot retain water like by yourself. Do you understand? Like the oil does not retain water, it does not attract water, dig it. So you also need to so sebum is made up of triglycerides, wax esters, free fatty acid, and things like squ squalene. That's why you see some oils, squalene oils, they are trying to you know imitate what sebum like produces screening oil these are things that components of sebum but then your components of your lipids are different things though. these are free acid free fatty acids as well you have cholesterol you have ceramide so producing excess sebum does not mean that you are actually producing the right lipids or the right oil for your epidermal lipids the lipids that are in charge of binding your conicides together so you need a moisturizer that is not oil free oil free because you can Emollient does not mean oil. Yeah. So as I explained, emollients soften your skin and they include oil and other types of you know fats and you know waxy oil soluble things. You get a moisturizer that doesn't have oil but has emollients, they all will have emollients. <laughs> so that's oil get an oil-free lightweight moisturizer. You can also get away with some serums because some serums have humectants, but then they also put emollients in them as well. You can get away with using those. Yeah, but I would advise you, in addition to your hydrating serums, get a moisturizer, a very lightweight moisturizer. Even if you don't use it every night, right, you can just use a hydrating serum and in other nights, you use a moisturizer over it or just your moisturizer. What I'm saying that is that for hydration to properly work, especially if it's a serum that is just straight hydrating and no emollient, it can be counterproductive because even if it traps in water, hydrators trapping water, even if it traps in water, 
because you don't have anything that would cover it, that would occlude, the water can evaporate. Yes, you produce sebum and the oils in your skin could help you trap that water in, but you still need to help your skin to actually, you know, get the but they have the optimal benefit of your skin barrier so for my early skin sisters don't worry i will leave links to creams to oil free creams that you could try out even if you have dry skin too as well i'll just leave links to amazing moisturizers that you could try out i will link i'll put for dry skin normal skin and oily skin so one more thing if you have a damaged skin barrier now what do you do you could just get a good moisturizer okay but I will recommend if your skin is your if your skin barrier is really like like something else. <laughs> do you get? I would suggest you opt for using a balm, like a balm. And topic cream use wait, we don't get to yes. Topic cream makes a very nice one. This is the topic cream seeker balm. Amazing. It is good for repairing skin barrier. It has emollient really beneficial emollients it has occlusives it has humectants it just seals in everything and almost like it's resetting your skin barrier by fire by force <laughs> you must get back to normal do you understand if you stay in a place like nigeria you may find it uncomfortable to use in the mornings especially if you have oily skin so of course after using it though you must use your sunscreen very important but yeah so our advice that if you find it comfortable, just use it at night before you sleep. I also advise for people that just went through cosmetic procedures, all those very intense ones, like chemical peel, use it after your cosmetic procedures for a while to just protect your skin. I also advise for people that are using very sensitizing ingredients. So people that are using retinoic acid, that's retinoids, they are using benzoyl peroxide, all these things that become very sensitizing to your skin. You are on an acne regimen and it feels like your skin is on fire. You use it to soothe your skin, calm it down. You can use it as a as a nightly moisturizer, but I would advise that you should you I guess that almost everybody should buy it first of all. Whenever it feels like your skin barrier is off, just use it until your skin barrier bounces back. Then you can go you can go back to using your normal moisturizers just because it's very thick. So it's not everybody that's comfortable using it. But if you have really dry skin, you can knock yourself out. Use it every day. Now use that bit. But I'm just saying this so people that you know stay in Nigeria, I know how hot it can be, and it's not everybody that has running gen from morning to night, and running gen, running AC, running everything. It's not everybody that that can do that. So and for the normal person. <laughs> no matter if Nigerian, you can just leave it to when your skin barrier is you know impaired, or if you are on a skincare routine that is very harsh or very sensitizing, you can use it as well to just calm everything down. Yeah, so that's all I have. So honestly, moisturizers are very, 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 very important. As usual, I I will not just come and say something without giving you reasons, facts why I'm saying what I'm saying. So I hope I've, you know, confi <laughs> I hope I've convinced you, I'm not confused you, that using moisturizers is the best thing you can ever do for your skin. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you have specific videos that you want me to make, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.